big good one here, and eventually we will. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Help promote and rank up my channel. And comment down below. Let me know what worked for you, what didn't in this episode of The Boys. Season 2, Episode 7. So the best stuff about this one, well, the funny, awkward, cringeworthy stuff with Lamplighter, oh, just sitting around trying to watch porn with Huey like it's normal, it's not weird at all, That's and all the dialogue that went along with that, them making comparisons to porn, them comparing themselves or their situations with things in the porn industry or whatever, that was just weird and creepy, uh, but it worked. To some degree, it worked. Uh, it's just really out there. Pretty psychotic. So, along with that, the Homelander and Stormfront stuff with the kid, that the tensions amped up really high, really great. And, and Homelander could have completely just snatched this kid away, but it didn't do that. It went the more manipulative route that those two are, Stormfront and Homelander. It's just really interesting to see how that played out. You know, she, the mother, it, it seemed like she thought maybe she got through to it. Maybe there's a point, but we're talking about Homelander here, and of course they played it the manipulative way in which the mother comes off as the bad guy, and they still get what they want. That was absolutely well played. Uh, the dialogue with Starlight and her mother, that was pretty great, and that scene was very reminiscent to Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 uh, with Dr. Octopus. Uh, the, that action scene right there was really great. The dialogue was really strong there. And then you get a lot of other stuff like the direction they went with Queen Maeve's character. I, I definitely knew this was going to happen with the relationship. She's been urging her to see this other side of her. And, and now that she has, it's just unforgivable and god-awful. And that was great. I, I liked how they did didn't scare away from that. They went full in on it, and May flipping that table is definitely a real reaction somebody would have. At the two of these, the way that played out, that was well played. That, that was realistic reactions to this kind of thing and the downworld spiral that Maeve's going to be on now. So uh, there were a lot of things to appreciate in this episode. The Starlight Black Noir fight. Um, the amusing thing they alluded to, the almond chocolate bar that uh, Maeve ends up subduing badass Black Noir with candy. This Batman Daredevil-like character is just taken down with candy. So other things, the church, A-Train, there was some hilarious stuff there that they did. Some things that they highlighted there. But for the most part, that was the best stuff of the episode. There was not a whole lot. There was just a little amusing things here and there. Uh, great, great acting, as always. Great production values, all that good stuff. Some tensions were really amped up and well played. Um, but that's the best stuff. Now, with that said, let's move into act to my personal bias. So my personal bias on this one, you know, some people are going to be pretty offended comic book fans. Uh, they're going to be offended with something they did different with Black Noir. Um, and it really does take away something huge and impactful away from the story. This reveal here with Black Noir takes away a huge monumental reveal from the source material and it could still play out well enough it could still be good it could still be great but it's never going to be great as the reveal in the books in the source material however if they're doing what I think they're doing then it's going to be a great payoff and I would spell it out but I don't want to potentially spoil everything so I'm going to leave that alone and it's interesting they could still pull off quite the surprise um so with that said other things my personal bias uh, name dropping PewDiePie from Stormfront I I felt like that was just like the media I, I felt like it came from her because the media has tried to frame that YouTuber and shame him in the past as a racist or as you know everybody's walking on eggshells these days because he, even some people that uh, that are black that lean a certain direction are labeled as you know what just just for having the opposing opinion well um <laughs> other than that too uh, the boys 
is at its best when it's making fun of, poking fun of culture and all that stuff, poking fun of our society, poking fun of superhero movies, parody, you know, it's a satire. So The Boys is at its best when it's doing that. However, for this one, um, the opening scene with uh, social media radicalizing this normal, average, uh, everyday dude, um, that felt like propaganda to me because it wasn't, it didn't do it jokingly or amusingly. It, it just did it straight laced. This guy's been radicalized by everything Stormfront's been saying. So that to me just, it felt too in your face political, too on the nose, however you want to put it, that did not work for me. Um, as for anything else, that, that that's pretty much all I have in the personal bias. Things that affected my view of this episode, but may, may not actually affect yours. With that said, let's move on to Act 3, where we're just going to discuss all the flaws about the episode. So as I stated, uh, the opening fell flat for me. This guy being radicalized by Stormfront, the uh, social media stuff, his, uh, you know, every day tuning in for this stuff, listening to it constantly, him being radicalized, felt like it was framing one side of the political narrative uh, as the villain. It, it, it just felt too straightforward. It fell flat. It did not work. It was... It wasn't satire. It wasn't humorous. It wasn't handled in a comedic way or anything. As where you have like the whole corporate way of handling Maeve's coming out party. Like you have things like that that are done in a humorous way that reflect reality. That this wasn't done in a kind of entertaining way. It was just straight up is what it is type thing. So uh, another reason it didn't work for me is because it did nothing to propel the story forward and it did nothing to tie into the overall story really in a great way. And this character is not going to be relevant. So the few minutes where we wasted on this character is really, it really just doesn't work. Uh, with that said, moving on, Lamplighter. Uh, <laughs> Throwing away this character so soon, the the death of Lamplighter, the way it was handled, it just it's such a disappointment. I it I feel like it is does negatively impact the story because you had a huge huge opportunity here with a great actor to do something really great, and uh, you spent a good chunk of the last episode like building up this whole Lamplighter thing just to throw him under uh, just uh Get rid of him in this fashion the very next episode. It, it just did not work for me. It, it was poorly done, poorly uh, poorly executed. It just very underwhelming, uh, very wasteful. Moving on from that, I, I do want to point out that bot security sucks. Bot security, I'm supposed to believe this multi-billion dollar corporation has such bad security. They didn't remove uh, Lamplighter. Uh, and they just have this spot where they can just slip in. Of course, most people aren't going to go there because who would? Who would want to break into a place where you have like Homelander and Black Noyer and Queen Maeve the Seven? But still, I mean, come on, that's uh, that's kind of pretty unrealistic in my opinion. So moving on from that one. The Butcher Father stuff, it really didn't work for me. We're very late in the season to be doing something like this, to be pulling his attention away from the mission for something like this. It really just doesn't work, and the whole scene that played out there didn't work for me. Uh, you know, maybe it was to indicate that, you know, to Butcher, maybe to show him that, that this is at what you're at risk of becoming and all that. Maybe that's what it was all for, but for me, it really didn't do much besides distract us from everything that that is really important right now and needs to be focused on. Yeah, they've already watered down Butcher enough, so if this is an effort to nerf him even more, then let's... <laughs> why are we doing that? He, he's already pretty watered down as it is. Um, so... The ending scene with the whole heads exploding and stuff, I should have put that in the good section because that was pretty great. That that really had tensions amped up and Homelander and Stormfront seemed very confused by what's happening like they didn't know. Now, I, I do believe that this is that character Sydney popping heads that they had her in that facility to possibly pull her out for assassination missions and all that and since she's been free, she's come to get revenge on everybody that just used her. Um... 
And I thought that part of the episode was great, where everybody's heads just start popping and exploding. They got rid of a... What's his name? The speedster that replaced A Train. They, they put an end to that guy, um, which there was already an indication that A Train and the Deep might maybe able to come back, and this might further cement that A Train is going to be able to come back. And ultimately, I think it's A Train that's going to end up saving the Deep from this church like cult or whatever, whatever's going on there. But with that said, speculation, um, my overall rating for this episode is just a 5 out of 10. We're very late into the game, and I still feel like we're just, you know, skirting around everything and barely, barely giving it any attention or all that. And this doesn't, this season so far has not lived up to season one. It's still good. It's still funny. It's still humorous, but it does feel like it's a little bit more on the nose with all the political stuff and a bit more in your face. I'm very curious to see where we're going to wrap things up for this season. I'm really interested in things moving forward, but some things just like this one felt like it was just like clearly, clearly uh, leaning in to too much of the political stuff as straightforward uh, because that wasn't amusing and it didn't really do anything to serve the story of that guy being radicalized and it just felt like propaganda some moments in here felt like propaganda like they're always saying that the people that go on about SJWs are alt-right and all this and that, that that there's no credibility in their argument but uh, you know, entertainment needs to take more of a middle approach to be able to, uh, to appeal to both crowds. Um, and I felt like they just didn't handle it well this episode. So 5 out of 10 for me on this one. It had some really great shining moments. The action between uh, Starlight and Lamp uh, and Black Noir, that was pretty damn good. <laughs> Everything, uh, there's some really amusing things in here. But 5 out of 10. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. Did you like it? Did you dislike it? Uh, did these things work for you? The things that didn't work for me? Do you think that... We're going to have an amazing next episode. Let me know your favorite, least favorite things about this episode. Comment in the comment section below. Let's talk about it. Big good one here. Eventually, we will stay awesome. Rock on.